welcome all of you to our social media event. Just as a brief reminder, this will be taped and put up on YouTube. I'll have it public probably by tomorrow morning. I would like now to introduce our club president, Virginia Wasserman. Let's give a rousing round of applause for Virginia. everyone for coming out on this brisk almost spring day it's hard to believe that Monday is going to be spring and we've got snow on the ground well we didn't have it in January but I think it's definitely going to be worth your while to brave the cold tonight first of all you're in a great place with a lot of fun people we have two excellent presenters tonight we have Kim and Val who are experts on this topic. They really worked hard at it. And we have so much food in the back that you won't go home hungry. And I'll thank you for Joel for bringing all that bottled water. He wants everyone to have at least one bottle so he doesn't have to carry it out of here. Thank you. <laughs> you can take one home. Just a brief uh, message to the current members. If you have your dues check, you can give it to me later in the meeting. If we get eight check, eight members paid by the before the end of the month, we automatically get a presenter. So, well, yeah, right. I, I, I'm sorry I took it out of my purse. <laughs> I always have it, and then I took it out, so I don't have it tonight. Then we all of our members, I need to have a rousing, and I mean rousing, applause for our club member, Roger, who won his area contest last night and is going to compete in the Northwest Division. <laughs> because this is the division we're in and it's going to be great and we'll see who's going to go on to the spring conference. And I think with that, we should get started. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me call up our Toastmaster du jour. He's the most comfortable Toastmaster, the one who is sought after by area directors and division directors. You couldn't be in better hands. Mr. Jerry Evans. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests this evening. Before we begin the formal program, and before I bring up Kim and Valerie, I would like our guest, if you could please do me a favor and do all of us a favor. If you would just please stand and introduce yourself, let us know how you found Top Toastmasters, how you came to the, to the workshop this evening, and then we'll proceed with the workshop this evening. So Jacob, would you like to start? Sure. Hi, my name is Jacob Ryling. Uh, I to about Toastmasters about two weeks ago. Ran into Jerry last Wednesday. He told me about this event. So here I am. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Locke, and I found out about this uh, actually through my girlfriend Terry. She's going into essential oils, and so she wants to learn better speaking for her business. And so she's like, "Do you want to go?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So we've been to two meetings, Crystal Lake and Kerry, and this will be my third event. And hopefully, going forward, we'll you know be doing more. So there you go. Nice meeting. Thank you. We'll go in the back. So, Ann, you want us to go ahead? Hi, I, this is my first time at a TOPS meeting. I've been a member of CARI for CARI Girl for two years, and I'm the VP of Public Relations, so I'm hoping to get lots of good information here. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks, Ann. Thank you. 
Gary Chris from Fox Valley Toastmasters. Great to be here. Uh, really excited to learn more about what I need to do to get this project. I was here a couple years ago practicing my speech, and now I'm going to put it all together and use the uh, networking skills that I'm going to learn tonight to make the world a better place. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Hi, my name is Elena Zamova. Well, I'm the youngest here, but I found, uh, I found out about this event on eventbreed.com website. Mm -hmm. um, well, I came to find out what all this is about. Okay, and from okay. now I'm learning today. Thank okay. you. Yes. Thank you all. Well. Before I bring up Kim, I'm going to give you a little quick commercial about Top Toast Message for our guest. Toastmasters on Purpose was started back in June of 2010, so actually this June we'll celebrate six years. We're the only advanced club in the northwestern suburbs and in the northwest division. The thing about TOP is we focus on two things. We focus on speeches and evaluations, so if you want to elevate your evaluations, then this is the place you come to. If you want to become a better speaker, presenter, TOP is where you come to because we want you to up-level your speaking so whether or not you aspire just to become a presenter, better presenter at work, or whether you aspire to become a professional speaker, top is the place to be. Because we've had a lot of different members go through top over the years from the time we started back in 2010 to right now in 2017, they've advanced in contests, they've gone to speak outside of Toastmasters, Val has taken her business in speaking outside of Toastmasters, taken it to a whole different level, and we've had other people who've been part of TOP that have done the same thing. So in the six years that we've been into existence, we continue to focus on those two things. And in the process of putting on these type of workshops, we also get an opportunity to grow and learn from other people, not only our members in the club, but people who come to TOP and speak and get on the agenda outside the club. So we all, it's a win-win for all of us. So tonight, it's a win-win for all of you because we get to hear two terrific presentations this evening that'll help us understand social media, not only how to use it on the club side, but also Val, we will talk about how to use it on a professional side. So you get the best of both worlds this evening. I want to share this with you. This is a little unorthodox, if you will, because we normally don't start our meetings this way. But top also we meet the first and third Wednesdays just we meet in this room here X 143 and we meet from 7 to 9 p.m. the first and third Wednesdays so for our guests this evening we welcome you to come back our next meeting which will be April the 5th so you can see what a regular meeting is like because we put these workshops on typically we'll put on about three or four different workshops a year or usually like once per quarter and the topics will vary because that's our way most everybody in the club is an experienced Toastmaster that's our way of giving back to other members. Okay? So I want to share this with you very quickly. And I already shared it with one of our members. I forwarded it on to him. And it's a story that I came across the other day. And I thought it was just a cute story. And it's something to kind of lift our spirits. There once was a little boy who wanted to meet God. He knew it was a long trip to where God lived. So he packed his suitcase with Twinkies and a six pair of root beer. And he started his journey. When he'd gone about three blocks, he met an old woman. She was sitting in the park, just staring at some pigeons. The boy sat down next to her and opened his suitcase. He was about to take a drink from his root beer when he noticed that the old lady looked hungry. So he offered her a Twinkie. She gratefully accepted it, and she smiled at him. Her smile was so pretty that the boy wanted to see it again, so he offered her root beer. Once again, she smiled at him. The boy was delighted. They sat there all afternoon, eating and smiling, but they never said a word. As it grew dark, the boy realized how tired he was, and he got up to leave. But before he had gone a few more steps, he turned around, ran back to the old woman, and gave her a big hug. She gave him the biggest smile ever. When the boy opened the door to his own house a short time later, his mother was surprised by the look of joy on his face. She asked him, what did you do today that made you so hungry or so happy? He replied, I had lunch with God. But before his mother could respond, he added, You know what? She's got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Meanwhile, the old woman, also radiant with joy, returned to her home. 
Her son was stunned by the look of peace on her face, and he asked, Mother, what did you do today that made you so happy? She replied, I ate Twinkies in the park with God. But before her son responded, she added, You know, he's much younger than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> So, fellow Toastmasters and guests this evening, tonight we're going to be talking about social media. Questions in your mind. What does social media matter? How can you use social media as a professional speaker? How did you tell your club story on social media? And how do you, how do we choose the right platform or app? Our first speaker this evening is Kim Rodriguez. She's an advanced communication bronze, advanced communicator bronze, also advanced leader bronze. And she's a member of multiple clubs. I'll let her share with you the clubs that she belongs to. And we're thrilled that she's a part of TOP, decided to be part of our, our family here. And she's going to talk to you about three key things. The features of social media platforms and apps, branding and marketing for club growth, and engagement, telling your story. Please help me welcome to the lectern, Kim Rodriguez. I belong to multiple Toastmasters clubs. Uh, I drove the furthest to get to this one from the John Hancock Center, so I'm very happy not to have been late. Uh, but I am currently president of a downtown club called South Loop Speak Freaks. I am the vice president of education for Toastmasters Lincoln Park. And for TOPS, I'm just a regular member. So uh, I have a wide wealth of experience with Toastmasters, uh, including two years as VP of PR. So when it comes to talking about social media and using social media to promote a club, I've done had a lot of experience with different ideas and different things to try. So I'm hoping to share those with you tonight. Uh, hopefully you go back to your clubs inspired. If you're in a community-based group, uh, you bring some ideas back to your board or your officers, like, hey, let's try this and take things in a certain direction because uh, our clubs are membership based, it's people to people, and social media is meant to help increase that interaction. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll learn some new things tonight. Uh, Valerie will be taking over, as it was said, to do more professional side of social media. But getting onto this, because we don't have a quick record. There we go. It's on. Is it on? Yes. Okay. This is the beautiful Toastmasters International uh, slide deck graphic. Okay, so plan for success. Uh, one thing about social media is that it's an important part of your campaign uh, for your club that runs all year long. Uh, coming up in April, we start our new six-month membership term, and April is really the time to plant the seeds for your club's success. Uh, the leadership changes over uh, July 1st, uh, but now is the time to start talking, you know, kind of reviewing things that you've done, things that you hope to do, uh, what worked and what didn't. And hopefully, uh, when your officer team changes, uh, if you don't have a very strong social media presence for your club, maybe you'll get a new vice president of PR who's a little bit more experienced or maybe more open to trying some new things. And one of the things, social media is considered a democracy, that way multiple people can participate. Uh, it's not just falling on the VP of PR to post things on Facebook or take pictures. It's like something that the whole leadership team or even other members of your club who are more enthusiastic can participate in. So it doesn't land on one person and everyone has a ownership in what is happening with the way the club communicates. Uh, so April is a great time to think about this stuff. Uh, but one question you have to ask yourself is, is it Facebook enough? Now how many people have their clubs on Facebook? Twitter? Any, who, who, does not, who has a club that's not on social media? Okay, okay, just want to get a taste of it. How many of you all have personal social media accounts? Okay, a little bit more people. Okay, so using social media, if you already know how to use your Facebook, you can definitely apply that to using it for your club. Uh, there's definitely ways that you can kind of pick and choose what might be best for your club. And part of uh, the process of learning what would suit you best is you know, what is the state of your club right now? And just briefly, uh, there are several social media challenge, uh, channels that people can choose from. Uh, there are new ones being developed all the time. And part of choosing which platform works for you, one of the most important things you have to think about is age. 
uh, younger people, people in high school, people in early college, they love whatever the newest and greatest thing their parents are not on. <laughs> so there are actually programs out there I have never heard about. So I'm only talking tonight about the things that I do know. Uh, Facebook is actually one of the world's most popular programs. And there are millions, I want to say thousands of uh, Toastmasters clubs on Facebook. And what Facebook has been trying to develop itself as something for everyone. So if you just want to have friends, you want to have a club page that's private, you can do that. If you want to have a more open page where you can pay to advertise your club, you can do that. Uh, if you just want to have a group run off your personal account, you can do that as well. And they're expanding into something called uh, Facebook Live, which is live streaming. Uh, we videotape our presentations, uh, but with Facebook Live, you can actually run 30 minutes live and broadcast out to whoever your public is. Uh, there's some complications with that, but that's just one of the new ways they're trying to make uh, their platform much more interactive. So if you're not sure what you want, uh, Facebook is kind of like, I want to say the station wagon that kind of fits in everybody, or the minivan. Uh, you can kind of think of it like that. Uh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter is very popular with our president. Uh, it gets a lot of uh, news, uh, but Twitter is only limited to 140 characters. So when you write on Twitter, you have to be uh, very short and concise. You also need to do it often. Uh, so one of the things with Twitter, if you post once a month, no one's ever going to see it. You have to post regularly and often. With Facebook, you can post once a week and. That's great. Uh, it won't disappear. It'll still be there. But Twitter just churns and churns and churns. Uh, another very popular uh, channel is YouTube. Uh, if you have a video of yourself, you can post it on. You can create your own channel, and you can direct people to your channel to watch your videos. <laughs> I know people in Toastmasters who have taken videos from a club meeting, posted on YouTube, and they got a speaking job from it or they got hired, or they got a promotion because someone saw their speech and they're like, wow, I really like your promotion, your skills. This is awesome. And some people just want to brag. Uh, so YouTube, uh, you have the opportunity to upload your own videos. You can also upload your friends. Uh, so there's some flexibility with that one. Uh, Instagram, which is the little camera right here. Instagram is basically your photo album, and you connect it to other people's photo albums. Now the only drawback with a photo album is that it's a two-dimensional image, and in Toastmasters we talk, so nobody can hear you on that image, but they can tell the story through your pictures. So if you are more visually oriented and you don't want to type a lot of words, you can just post up pictures about your meetings, about your success, uh, things that you're doing as well. Uh, also Meetup is uh, another very popular uh, platform with Toastmasters clubs. Uh, I my I have an email that gets basically like five to seven meetup invitations almost every day from Toastmasters groups. So you can sign up for that one and you can make friends and you can always invite them to your meetings, to a conference, to a special event. Uh, and those turn pretty much every week. You'll get that same invitation over and over as long as you designate. So it's nice to kind of like set it up and then let it run until it stops. And then the final thing is Eventbrite, and Eventbrite is basically for special events. Uh, our spring conference is coming up in April, and you can sign up for tickets through that page. Eventbrite is also free for social club, clubs that don't charge events, and people like to use it because they're bored and they're looking for something new to do. Uh, so people can just look up your event, oh, this sounds interesting, and they come to your club, your conference, whatever. So these are the main things uh, that a lot of different clubs use. They all have their benefits. Uh, LinkedIn is something that Valerie will, that will be talking about later. Uh, but I just wanted to give that very quick overview about the different platforms and just some of their basic features, because a lot of them have more than I can follow. Uh, but a lot of things with social media is time. You have to have time to make your post and time to put them on the platform. And frequency. Some are just more demanding than others. It just depends on what how much time you have, and how much you really want to communicate uh, to the public, which could be your club, your members, your friends, uh, even to you know people at large. Uh, I have uh, I run Toastmasters clubs, and we're connected to people in Dubai, uh, Malaysia, and a couple places. People who used to live in America now they went back to India, and they're connected to us. So we get those messages like all over the world, which is really interesting.
basically with social media, social media is word of mouth. It's just the same when someone comes in our door and they have a great club experience. Say, hey, how's that, how's that Toastmasters thing last night? You know, I went to that meeting out, out way out uh, at uh, Harper College. That was a fantastic meeting. This place is so fantastic. Social media is basically the platform to communicate that same idea that Toastmasters International is a great organization to be a part of, and being part of your club not only enhances your leadership and professional skill, uh, speaking skills, it also brings you friends, it generally aids your life in multiple ways. So, uh, word of mouth is the main function of social media. Okay, so one thing, uh, Toastmasters International actually defines social media or tr considers it as an extension of their brand. So when clubs have a Facebook page, they do have an expectation that you do things with a certain professionalism uh, as far as the content that you post. Uh, so Toastmasters actually has a number of tools to kind of help you figure out what is the best uh, communication strategies for your club. Uh, what do you want people to contribute? Uh, how often do you want to communicate with people and invite them to things? Uh, so there are three plans for clubs. Uh, club success plan, moments of truth, and closing the sale. Uh, has, how many people have, are familiar with these programs or have actually conducted one in their club? Okay, uh, th these are actually uh, really important, especially at the beginning of your Toastmasters year, primarily to do your planning for what you want to come up next. Uh, good clubs have strong leadership, and when you have a plan, you know what you want to do and where you're going to go, it just makes a lot of the work of running your club much easier. You can explain who you are, why you're doing, what you do, and what you want people to engage with you uh, during the year. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, uh, the first one is the club. Distinct we all want our clubs to be distinguished, but uh, we have a club success plan. And basically this is a questionnaire that you run with your club members. Among the many questions that you go through the process is defining your club's values. How many people here know what are Toastmasters International values? Anybody? What are they, Jerry? <coughs> Respect, integrity, service, and excellence. Oh, that's great. Yes, that's that's definitely that's definitely it. So, how if that's the values of your club, how do you communicate that message? Uh, the Distinguished Six Clubs program will certainly help you with that. Uh, what are the core values of your club? It also encourages you to have a theme for your year. Rise is definitely a theme for the year. Everybody wants to rise up. You help each other lift each other up. There's lots of ways that you can express that and then promote that with your clubs, with your fellow members and online as well. Um, we have our conference, we have launching a new ne legacy. That's a theme as well. So, you know, we're doing a lot of activities with that. So you might be seeing more stories about the history of District 30 as we start to become two, diff two different districts. Uh, we also have a theme, uh, one member, one club, one year, every one, every one matters. Uh, that's more on the leadership side. So whatever you decide what your club theme is, you can rally your members around that topic and then you can speak about it during the year. If it's RISE, you can talk, focus on your mentoring program. You can get testimony from your new members after they give their icebreaker. How did it feel to give your icebreaker? And then they might give you a statement. You can. That you can put that on your social media with a photo of that person saying this person just did their icebreaker and this is what they got from it. It not only reinforces the value of your club, but it also demonstrates our Toastmasters program and what we try to communicate. Uh, so your club success plan will help you provide that framework as your year starts. Actually, I made a little mistake. I'm talking about moments of truth because I love that yes. one. What I just discussed was moments of truth. Now I'm going to talk about the club success plan. Uh, the club success plan, actually I actually have the brochure over there, uh, basically designs the leadership of your club. So you go through the different exercises, and part of it is your leadership, how you will resolve issues of conflict, how you're going to communicate, who is going to do what. But with the uh, club success plan, you do go over those core values and what you want to express. Uh, moments of truth, when you walk in the door, it's how do you make that good impression? You do the same thing with the social media. You recognize achievement, how do you do that? How do you encourage people to join your club? 
how do you promote conferences and meetups and all the wonderful things Toastmaster has, and how do you express yourself in the most positive way about the work that we're doing. Uh, some people might be, well, it's just a little speech club. No, it could be more than that. Uh, Toastmasters could be a life-altering experience in the most positive way for everyone. Uh, but basically, with Moments of Truth, you're setting the club pulse uh, where people are at. Some people in your club may not want to be on <coughs> social media. Some people in your club may not want to participate with a whole bunch of things. Uh, your Moments of Truth will bring that out. Uh, but your club success plan is for your leadership, like, okay, these are our goals. We're still going to accomplish them. So you can talk about your leadership, like, okay, we all went to training. This is us at our training dist uh, with our meeting with our area governor, our district leader. Uh, there's multiple ways to develop those stories around that and what you're actively doing. Um, okay, what makes your club unique? Part of marketing your club is when you go through the moments of truth and your club success plan is like what makes your club unique. Uh, we are uh, Tops is an advanced speaking club. Uh, Toastmasters of Lincoln Park is a speaking club and a social club. As South Loop Speak Freaks, we get our freak on, and people take that in lots of ways. But we try to define it as our enthusiasm. Uh, so just our joy of speaking and the joy of being together and helping each other out. Uh, so it does help to have some kind of defining uh, phrase or term that kind of defines who you are as a club. So when you talk about your social media, your content derives from your achievements, uh, whatever those happen to be, uh, openness, you know, you want to invite people, welcome people onto your page, welcome people who are in the club, uh, you know, just share like testimony that this is a great club, this is a great program, and I'm, I'm learning a lot from it. Uh, opportunity, uh, people join your club because they see it on somebody else's feed, or they heard about it, they're not in Toastmasters, or maybe they like your pictures and they just want to join. So you let them join your page, eventually they may show up to a meeting. They're just like, well, I like the pictures, I like this, I thought I'd check it out. So that's one way of like selling your club without really trying. And then positivity, everyone likes, uh, we all work all day, we're tired, we come here, and it's such an uplifting experience. Uh, everything that you communicate through your club has the ability to touch someone who's maybe having a hard time. They're like, you know what, I keep hearing this all the time from this group. I'm just going to come and check it out. And they may end up with more than what they experience, and that is the key to get them to join. So you don't have to ask them. Just by your actions, you're already kind of selling the club and kind of making it possible that this is an opportunity they cannot give up. Okay, and then we have our third module, Closing the Sale. Uh, now, selling the club, when people come and you're talking about the club, uh, maybe not in this club, but in other clubs, some people are very squeamish about asking people, do you want to join our club? Uh, they don't want to feel like they're selling somebody on something, but uh, the closing the sale actually gives you some techniques for just asking people questions to get them talking about why they're here, what they want, and then you can answer them with what's great about us and why you should be a part of us. So. Okay, so compare. Uh, you can actually tell people the benefits of your club, and you can express that like every week, you know, such as, are you afraid of public speaking? You want to gain confidence? Join us Thursday, 6 o'clock in Schaumburg, and you can send them an invitation. You can just do that without pushing on them. Like, hey, come to, come, you want to come to my meeting? You want to come to my meeting? You want to call me? <laughs> Give me your phone number, I'll text you. How's that? I'll come to your work and pick you up. Would you like that? Awesome. Or would you awesome. like, you would like that. Okay. <laughs> Some people would text they just me. prefer just send me an email. No. Or just send okay. me an invitation <laughs> yeah, on Facebook. Or let me join your Facebook thing. Yeah. That's totally fine. So, But you could compare. Instead of taking a class at Harvard College why don't, for 10 weeks, why don't you join the Toastmasters Club? You have six months to improve your public speaking skills. So that's kind of the comparison that you want to make. Um, to lose. Toastmasters loves to express loss. Uh, what do you have to lose by joining us? Or what do you have to lose by letting go of your fear and embracing this whole program? Uh, one of the things that you could do is just repeat all the time. You will gain confidence. I gain confidence. He gained confidence. She's accomplishing her dreams. He, she, uh, that person in the back is doing more than they ever imagined. You can just repeat that over and over. You'll never have people tired of hearing about that, 
And as far as social media, just frequency of repeating things, nobody gets tired of seeing it. It's just constantly refreshing with that message um, and opinion. Especially on Facebook, you can actually have conversations with people. You can post a question, well, who's going to the conference? Or you can say, I'm struggling with my number five speech. How do I, what does it mean when someone says use a transition? You can actually engage people with that conversation. Uh, you, hopefully you do it with a mentor, but sometimes someone might have a great answer that can answer that person's question. And sometimes, depending on the topic, you can really pull a lot of people into your conversation who maybe don't speak up at the club meetings. Uh, maybe they don't belong to your club, but they're a friend, and they're like, well, this is what our club does. Or they just never thought about it. They're like, wow, this opens up the whole idea of what your club's about. I never thought about this. This expanded my horizon. So uh, always asking an opinion usually elicits a result. And then story. We all have stories. That's one of the things we do every week. Uh, with social media, especially with Twitter, because you only have 140 characters, uh, you have to really condense it down. But uh, with social media, you can use pictures, you can use video, you can use uh, pictures from other people. Uh, you can kind of literally use different techniques to try to tell your story and repeat it often so people hear all the time how great your club is. One thing people like to hear is congratulations, so-and-so just got their confident communicator. They want to hear those constant stories of success. Um, and that's also an example. Uh, some people don't want to be on Facebook, and some people love being on Facebook. They want to be on it all the time. Uh, but you want to kind of bring in the wealth of your experience, such as the new person who just joined versus the person who just got their DTM. Uh, if, especially if they're working together, they can see how close you can get being a member of a club. So actually, examples are just the way to do that. Like I started as a, my first iceberg, I was so nervous. Now I'm a DTM, I can do many things with ease. Um, my voice is getting a little hoarse. So examples are always really good, compare and contrast. Okay, so next one. Okay, so you have the power of three. You have this Toastmasters year coming up, all these things to do. How do you remember all this? You have to be organized, you need to be searchable, and you need to be memorable. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, so Toastmasters recommends a PR ch uh, calendar or a checklist. How many people have that or use it? How many people have never heard of this? Okay, all right. Uh, basically, it's basically a calendar. It's a calendar of your frequency. Uh, so it's just basically a calendar. You write down when you're going to be posting something. So let's say you have something you want to share, like um, testimony from a member. You can set it up for every Tuesday, you're going to post something about a member. They love the club, they experienced this, they did that. So that way people start to anticipate, I'm going to hear about someone in the club very soon. My friend, this new person, you can set that up for every Tuesday. Uh, if you know that there's some kind of club news, an announcement, or our next club meeting is such and such, you can set that up for Sunday. Part of the value of doing that is that if you can't do it, you can delegate that to somebody else. Uh, so having a calendar helps you plan things out, especially with our calendar of conferences, uh, training institutes, uh, even uh, the World Conference and all the things that are events that are on that. You can make up a calendar so that you know in advance, like, okay, I'm going to set this up to communicate this, I'm going to ask someone else to do this, or I'm going to post a picture on this date. Uh, so it really helps you keep organized, and then if there's changes, you can just go ahead and do that. And this works especially well with Facebook. Uh, with Twitter, not so much, because Twitter you have to constantly be refreshing your feed, adding more information, that type of thing. Facebook, you can do something once a week, and that might be enough. And sharing too much all at once uh, is a detriment, because people see a whole avalanche of things, and suddenly they don't want to pay attention anymore. It's like, oh, I'm done. They want to move on to the next thing. or. Uh, People start responding, they add their own things, and then everything you just posted disappeared. Uh, so pacing it also lets your members know, hey, can you wait till two days from now to post your, your speaking gig or whatever? That way people have a chance to see what you're doing. So the PR calendar helps you with your priorities, with events, <coughs> everything else that can happen. Okay? And going on to how are you, are you hard to find? Uh, one of the things, you know, people go through Toastmasters.org, which is a great resource for all kinds of things, but to find different clubs. But sometimes people do, you know, Google search. And in this particular case, I use Toastmasters in Lincoln Park, 
Uh, we set up through Free Toast Host, our online server, web hosting program, uh, different types of keywords to find people. Uh, we also have a, our page is also hosted, co-hosted on a domain website where we set up a bunch of Google words. One of them was Cubs win, Oscar speeches, and uh, Toastmasters, Toastmasters Lincoln Park. Uh, so if you put in our zip code, we pop up as the first, uh, the club pops up first, and it comes, pops up uh, fifth. Uh, so keyword searches, uh, some people think it's outdated. It's really popular on Twitter, but uh, for search engines like Google, you know, if you're looking for something, it will pop up. And sometimes there's oddities. Uh, you can make your uh, search parameters any words that you want. Uh, Chicago Speakeasy is actually a downtown club. They're about four miles away from Toastmasters Lincoln Park, but for some reason, they, they're they below our neighbors and they're above us down here on these separate things. So they basically put everything they can imagine into their uh, search engines so that you can find them if you're looking for the Cubs. So uh, that's clever, uh, but a lot of people successfully use that. Uh, people use that to promote their products. Uh, people use that uh, hashtag thing, search to uh, promote concepts, and uh, it's easily adaptable for your Toastmasters, and you can update it as you move along. So next one. And are you harder to find by your website? Uh, you ask people, oh, just look up our webpage. It's like, well, is it just HTTP, a great club at toastmastersclubs.org? That's a lot for people to remember. If you could just say a greatclub.com, oh, I get it. It's easy to remember uh, for people to find you. Uh, so one of the things uh, Toastmaster Lincoln Park did is that we we got a uh, hosting on uh, GoDaddy. Uh, so we, uh, we we bought our name basically, uh, toastmasterslp.com, and it's hosted and it points to freetoasthost.com. So when you go to Toastmaster. When you go on the web page, it goes right to the free toast host. And you can do that to kind of change your name, kind of give you that overlay, extra uh, Google search parameters. And if you decide you want to build a website on top of it, you have that freedom to do that if you have the resources. Okay. And then on to Facebook uh, as the examples. Uh, one of the things that you want to do with your pictures, words, and images is actually make a presence. Uh, that's where people can start to see people on a regular basis and there's a certain continuity with look and just with content. And in this particular case, I did this one, but uh, someone else did that one. We shared kind of the <coughs> workload of the social media, but you can kind of see, these are our area, our area winners, and then these are people from our club contest. So uh, we're constantly putting out our achievements, things that we're doing, and we do a lot of group pictures, so that way people will get that, you know, we all like each other rather than just have an individual stay by themselves and be isolated. Uh, so that's one strategy for how we communicate uh, visually with what we're doing. Okay, next one. Here's something else that a lot of clubs can do, or it just depends on what kind of images you want to have. Uh, now that's me as a selfie with my little Toastmasters book, but you can't really see it. And then there's that book open with my hand, and then there's me just kind of showing off that I have a Toastmasters booklet. Um, there's not a lot of story with this and it, it kind of looks to me it looks a little strange i'm not sure how it fits to you uh, but some you sometimes you want to plan a little more thought uh, into the images that you put on because you want to make a very good impression about your club um, you know some of this is a little bit more what people do on their personal time uh, for their personal pages and sometimes they get melded in and it's like oh i didn't mean for this glamour shot to show up on the club web page uh, people know me so i'll get teased for that uh, but yeah, you want to kind of think about the images that you're using and uh, the story that you're telling with each page because your words mean one thing, but the images can somehow show something completely different. Okay. And mostly with all this social media stuff and all this effort to make content and brag about your club, uh, your accomplishments, and try to pull and invite members into your uh, club meetings and events, and even just to hang out with you guys, uh, strong clubs attract interested people and increases the viability of your club. So if you kind of go through certain processes for how you do things and you provide the structure that everyone can understand, uh, adapting your messaging to these different channels uh, will not only uh, make it clear to everybody what the expectations are, but it actually might spur some people to really step up, volunteer for the group, and really put their talents to use for your club. Uh, so this way your messaging is really good, people can find you, and when they, uh, 
they already have that club experience before they walk in the door. Thank you. If you look at your agenda, though, I bring Valerie up. We are going to take a 10-minute break so you can take advantage of some of the refreshments and the decadent chocolate cake back there and the healthy okay. stuff that Kim brought, you know, the oranges and a few other things, hummus, etc. But before we leave tonight, though, if you took some, hopefully you took some notes and then you can talk to Kim and then we're at the, toward the end of the agenda, we're going to have some Q&A, so if you have some additional questions you want to ask them live, then you can do that. So let's take a quick 10-minute break. Please be back here just uh, 7.55 or so, and then we'll bring Val up and we'll get into the second half of the uh, workshop tonight. Good stuff, good information. As I said earlier, we try to vary the workshops that we do because we've touched on a lot of different topics. We've covered contests, we've covered evaluations, We've discovered when you're in contest mode, how to win the international speech contest, how to win the evaluation contest. We've put on humorous workshops, Val's done an improv workshop, so we try to vary it up so that we provide value not only to our internal members, but also for those folks like you who come out tonight to, to learn more about social media. So we're gonna get started now with the second half. Let me introduce our next presenter. Okay. Tell us more about top. Okay, one minute. About top. You know, Kim was talking about a bunch of different things in terms of social media. The one thing about top is that for those of you who, uh, Kim just, she's going to be giving uh, her icebreaker speech, her audition speech at our next meeting, which is April the 5th, by the way. So the way the top works, is if you already have a CC or better, then you can become a member of TOP right away. If you have not gone through the basic program, meaning a competent communication manual, then we ask you to audition because we want to determine if, first of all, if we're a good fit for you, and if you already have some skills so that we don't have to help you overcome just getting up in front of a group of people and the nervousness, the anxiety, you may already be presenting at work. You may be speaking outside of Toastmasters. So we ask you to get a four to six minute icebreaker speech. It's just like when you do your icebreaker normally, it's about you so we get to know you and the skills that you already possess. And then we evaluate it, we give you feedback, and then we'll let you know whether or not um, you've passed the audition and then you can become a member of TOPS. How many have gone through the audition? process in the last few months, Jerry. How many have we had, Jen, with the past? Joel. Joel went through it. Kim is going to go through it. No, I said Kim is going to. Vibha went through it. Hazel Wagner went through it. Oh, you Kim. No, Kim. This Kim. This Kim. Not Kim Rodriguez. Yeah. Kim's going to go through another DTM again, probably. Multiple Kims, yeah. Just like we have, we have multiple Bobs in the club. Are we almost ready? Okay. So, for example, I was talking to, I was talking to a couple of you tonight, and for those of you who don't know Gary, uh, Gary, why don't you tell them real quickly? Just tell them about Peace Hammer. Tell them what, let, I, it's so important what Gary come on does. Up, Gary. Come on up. Yeah, come on up, Gary. Yeah. I want to give Gary, his name is Gary Christ, and he can tell you what club he's with. He might have forgotten when he told you earlier, but he does something that's so important, and I just think it's amazing. And so, you know, if you can just briefly share with him, Gary, what you do and what Peace Hammer is all about. 
thanks for the opportunity to speak for you. I have to, uh, of course, give thanks to Toastmasters because the speech that I practiced here, is, the title was Thank God for Toastmasters. It goes together, we can do so much more to help the world become a better place. Uh, I'm so, so happy to say that since I've seen you last two years ago, I've gotten a patent issued on the machine. We're really excited about, let's say, putting the networking together to get people to support it. And we think that we can, uh, well, since I should say, what I showed you two years ago doesn't even look, uh, well, it's somewhat similar, but it's different. We've got three new inventions. Tell them. Tell them what it is. Tell us what it is. I happen to uh, be blessed to go to Cambodia, and so many people there are victims of landmines. There's still over 5 million landmines in the ground. And I see how the people are trying to get rid of them uh, with going to by hand and removing them and that, it's so time consuming. So I developed, I was actually asked to put a septic system in where at an orphanage and there was a landmine at the, where I was gonna be working. So I mean, it's like really a, a big thing. So I made a machine to just basically uh, drop weights on the, on the mines and the machine's built strong enough that it will resist the blast of the mines. And it'll just go through the, the land and detonate them. Um, so that's my contribution to society. Wow. And it. Yeah, awesome. If you want to know more about the feed camera, please see Gary. He can give you some additional information about it because I think it's just, you know, we were talking before the meeting started tonight and He's sharing with Virginia and I that some of these landmines are still removed, Gary, tell them, by hand. Wow. By hand. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling to even come. So are we ready? We are ready. Okay. All right. Our second presenter this evening, let me introduce you to her. First of all, Valerie Fusan. She's a certified world-class speaking coach and trainer. She is also a licensed master practitioner, for some of you who might be familiar with NLP, better known as Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is the study of influence and personal performance. Valerie is also the co-author of World Class Speaking in Action. If you haven't read it, please pick it up. It is a great read. Valerie is also a member of Toastmasters since 1996, and she is also, she has the highest designation any of us can achieve in Toastmasters and that is the designation of Distinguished Toastmaster. That's like getting your master's degree in communication in Toastmasters. Valerie also studied improv at Second City, as well as the Long Grove Performing Arts Academy. Valerie conducts workshops for business professionals on speaking and storytelling using improv, which is a blast, and NLP techniques. Today, fellow Toastmasters and guests, you'll discover how you use social media for your speaking business. Please give me a warm, round, enthusiastic applause for Valerie Fusan with her presentation, Speaker's Presence on Social Media. Valerie Fusan. <laughs> coaching business, uh, what is your business that you're going to start? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to try Mary Kay. Oh, Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. And Kim is already starting her her business. Virginia is going to be starting her business <laughs> in speaking, right? Okay. Anyone else? And Roger, you have a business. And you are already working on social media. <laughs> yes. How, how about nonprofits? 
<laughs> nonprofits. Non nonprofits. That's a business. And what are you going to be doing? I have Dolphin Systems Inc. selling a uh, water filter alarm. Okay. And also uh, Centron Corporation, which is a consulting engineer in the products. All right. And you have a website? I have a website. And what else do I have right there? <laughs> You'll be promoting your book, so. And I have a book. Good. Two books. Right. And Joe, you're already working on your business. Early stages. Keynotes. New direction. Yeah. For attorneys. Yeah. So we have some people in the audience right now that are already in business or starting a business or thinking about a business. When I first started, before I started social media, I could think, oh, that's just a waste of time. People are just gone Facebook doing pictures of food. Who wants to see food? <laughs> Who wants to see people drinking at bars? <laughs> <laughs> one, pe one person does. <laughs> but really, Facebook is about social, the community part. If you want to develop your business, you really want to start focusing now on it and not wait until you've already started your business. Start focusing on it early because you have to connect with people before you even, before the, the uh, social media is even working. You have to connect and engage with people. I, when I first started getting on social media, I started on Facebook and I started on LinkedIn. And every day I would con connect with maybe 25 people. I'd spend maybe a half hour. But what I found that was quicker was actually to copy my message so that I could send that to everybody. I'm connecting with you because give them a little, a little message. But I'm going to go in first do the overview of social media and then we'll go into LinkedIn. So first we want to go into uh, Facebook. Now Kim already talked about Facebook for community events for Toastmasters. In Facebook there is also a business part and groups. I, so you have a Facebook that's a personal page. You create a business page. And the business page is going to be more targeted. But you have to have a, a community site, a regular Facebook site, in order to have the Facebook business page. So you do have to have the two. <coughs> I still haven't converted over to the business of Facebook. I have about 2,800 people on my Facebook page site. As a page is a business business page. Kim, you have a Facebook business page. So the difference is one is community, the other is business. But in the business, you're going to be able to schedule your 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 uh, posts so schedule your the pictures that you put on there in the regular one you can't do that so right now i'm contemplating whether i can convert my regular page into a business page when I, you can only do it once but you can do it but then i would have to start a regular page so that's something to start thinking about what i would suggest is to start figuring out what you want your business to look like. Because you also want it branded. You want to brand and market on these social sites. The, on your page, you're also going to have, I can promote. They don't like you to promote too much on your regular page. But I do promote occasionally. You know, by my meetup group, I have meetup meetings on the third Friday of the month, and I'll post that. This, week, this Friday, I'm going to have it on NLP and rapport building. <coughs> Another thing with the Facebook is that if you already have presentations, you already have workshops, you can invite the people that are coming, are coming to your training as a bonus to also participate in a web a Facebook community group for each program. 
So Virginia, if you're, you have a presentation on speaking, presentation skills, and you have this wonderful name, Virginia, uh, you know, body language for professionals, whatever your title is, you can have a group for that particular group. And then when you're promoting, trying to get people to sign up with you, you're saying you're going to you're going to get this training, and as a bonus, you're going to be able to be part of this group. Now I didn't realize till I was on Craig Valentine's group, he had a the speakers coaches. The groups are to have a community environment for the people that are in that training, that specific training, so they can go in and have discussions post their work, if they're working on a speech, they, be, they, propose, they would go ahead and post their speeches, and what do you think about this title? What do you think about this ending? And so now they're also getting the other people in the group to help. The other thing is that you're creating this environment and it's of value, because now they can get answers, not just from you, but from everyone in the group. So that's really a plus to have. And you can have as many groups as you want. So if you have different programs, think about the, the groups that you want to have for them. In Twitter, again, Kim said 140 characters. But you want to start to brand your social media. Have a header, have a logo, something to brand it so that it looks similar in color. The same colors all the way through all over your social media. Now in Twitter, again, I can post on Twitter 140 characters with a link, a short uh, bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y. I can shorten my, my title instead of having 20 characters, I can have 7 characters or 10 characters and post that on Twitter and I have it connected to my Facebook so it will automatically go into my Facebook. What you want to start thinking about is how these are all connected. Um, I've got 2,000 uh, followers, 1,600 followers and I'm following 2,000. So I started again by building a little bit at a time. Connect with who you want your audience to be. Connect to who you are going to market to. Or people that have the same client as you do. This way you are doing it effectively. And then on the meetup. On meetup I have over a thousand in my NLP group. And I have in another group, a networking training group, I have about 950 people in the group. Now, I acquired these groups from someone who didn't want to have them anymore. So it was a different, a different owner of the meetup. In meetup, you can have three websites. So I have three websites. I have this one, and then OP, I have one, and, and it's an networking and training and I just started another one on improv for women in business and I probably got about 60 people within a couple of weeks that wanted to become a member of it but a lot of people don't come but still you've got more exposure so guess what happens when I want to promote my improv workshops I promote them on this site my my networking site, my improv site, my website, Facebook. So I have it promoted in a lot of different areas. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more people that are looking at my training. Um, you can change back to, um, so this is the, uh, my website, my LinkedIn website. And we're going to talk about the title and the different uh, aspects of it, the different categories. Um, I've got 4,800 people on my LinkedIn. I didn't acquire that from someone else. <laughs> 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 that I actually went out and got people. So I have different categories of people that might be interested in speaking, 
and NLP in real estate. So I have a few different categories that I've, I've done. Now you have your name, and then you have your title, and then we'll go through uh, this a little bit later. Um, we'll go ahead and change that, and we'll do him later. So the next one is a YouTube. YouTube, you want to start, if you're going to have videos, you want to um, start working on the little short videos, one to two minutes, two to three minutes. Start developing that. And then Instagram, I think this is, oh, I'm oh, back to the other. The Instagram, you can't, you do Instagram. Can you do? You can do one minute videos now. You can do one sound. minute? Okay. So they keep updating each of these websites, each of these social media sites. So before it was just pictures. Now you could do a one minute video. But what Kim does, she will post a picture or a one minute video on Instagram. Then she will post it on Facebook. And she'll make comments on Facebook because you can't do that on Instagram. And YouTube. So she has the same content in three different social media sites. And that's how you're going to start building your business. By understanding how to connect each of these sites. Same content. And you can take it through all, all of these sites. The Pinterest, that's an, an interesting one. When that first came out, I said, how do you monetize Pinterest? It's pictures and decorating. I looked at it a little closer. The way you monetize it is you put your website name on each of the pictures that you are submitting. You're already doing it for Instagram. You're already doing it for all the other sites. So for speakers, it's not about decorating. It's not about food. It's not about floating. I went to a speaker's site and I said, well, what are they doing to monetize? They were actually posting quotes, articles, and they would put the link to their website to where this article was posted. So if someone thought that article was interesting just by the title and a, a brief description, they could link directly on Pinterest. It'll take them over to the website where they can read it because it has your name on it. And then your website is going to be monetized by having a lead capture on there. And I um, can't think of Aweber. I use Aweber, but there's other ones that you can have on your website. So if people are on your website and they want more information, they can go to this little box and they're going to get tips from you. They're going to get an ebook from you. They're going to get some sort of gift. By giving their email, you'll send them something. So now you're building your list there. You're building your list on Pinterest because more people have you are vis you're visible there. So you understand how this is all connected, and you can monetize it. So you start, want to start thinking of not social, not community, but by marketing. Start marketing, thinking marketing. How can I get my, my visibility, myself, out to all these people? Because they want to hear from you. They want to know what you have. And the, the marketing, I'll go through it a little bit in the, in the um, LinkedIn. But the marketing is done in each of these social media sites. So you first start with your website. And some people actually don't need a website. If they've developed their Facebook business page, that could be uh, a website. Because on your Facebook business page, you can actually uh, set it up to lead generate. To what? Lead generate. 
by having a link, you're able to put a link in there to get emails, to send them an ebook, to send them your tips. On your business page, you can do that. You can't do that on your regular Facebook, but on the business page, you can. <coughs> so if you don't want to have a website right now, start with a business page. And of course, you're going to have to pull people over to that business page or that website. The uh, Twitter also, what you want to do is post it in one spot. So I go from Twitter to Facebook, and you can only put in so many letters. So I'll go to Facebook, and then I'll expand my, my, my words, my comments. Or I'll just let it post with a short comments, and then go back and post again with additional information. So what if you have two posts in there? One is <coughs> short, and then one is more detailed. Same content, put it on YouTube. And then it'll take you to they'll take them to your website. Same content in Google Plus. Google Plus has a Google Hangout where you can actually talk to I think six or ten people. It's like Facebook Live. So you can start promoting even on Facebook Live, on um, or on Google Plus. And then again, they're all connected, so you can have the same content. What I would suggest is to map out where are you starting? Are you starting with two or three or four? And then put down, all right, you have a list, a checklist that Kim suggested so that you remember, okay, I did, I did Facebook, I did LinkedIn, I did Twitter, so that you have the same content going to all of these areas. The good thing about LinkedIn is that they actually started letting you put posts and articles on there. They originally, when they, they put it out, it was about maybe three or four years ago, they were inviting people. First they had only their influencers, only the real big people. And so now they started with inviting people as they were branching it out, and now anybody can write articles on it. So if you're writing an article there, again, post it on all of the other sites. The work is already done, you're just putting it in other sites. So again, you're getting all of this, uh, all these eyeballs on your social media, and that's what you want. So the LinkedIn is about uh, being credible, visibility, it's professional. You want to, the, the, so you have, Again, going back to the Facebook, you have to be careful what you put on there. Starting your business, you don't want to put drunken faces on there. You don't want to put political information on there. You want to be careful who's watching. Because if your clients are watching and they're turning, they're turning them off, because I've done that, oh, I don't want that language on my site, click, they're gone. Oh, I don't want to talk about politics. Click, there you go. I, I want my mind to be actually business and social, not all these controversies, unless that's my business, <laughs> unless I'm a journalist. But you have to be careful because you don't want to turn people off. Mm. Um, you so you first start with a professional title your name, if you have a title, uh, a lawyer, uh, MBA, uh, you know, coach, speaker, you can put all of that on there. And then you want to have a professional photo. Don't put an avatar, put a professional photo. I actually will not connect with people that have less than probably 100 people connections already. Because right now, there's a lot of scamming going on in social media now. LinkedIn, I'm always, and face, no, on Facebook, I get a lot of invitations to connect with me. And I go to their site, and it's a picture of somebody, a man, and they haven't gotten any connections, and they have pictures of women. So, cancel, <laughs> cancel. 
because there's a lot of scamming going on where they're trying to get you to give them money. So you have to really be careful who you connect to. So I connect to people that have connections similar to what I want, that they have a history, and they have a real photo. And, and that actually working the social media, not just one. I have 4,800 people. Why would somebody, why would I be their first friend? Um, so on the summary, the, the title, and then you have a summary that's next. On the summary, you want to have it uh, a little bit, about a paragraph of your story, and then maybe a paragraph of what you do and who you service. So when they start to read the summary, right away they know who, their who your target is, what you do. I get people that have, that want to connect with me or have even invited me to speak because of my summary, because of not what, I, what I do. Then, the next one, the, who you serve, the results that you, that you get from your work. You will have, do you want to have a book in 30 days? I will help you, through my process, develop a book. Or through my process, I will help you create your keynote speech. Through my process, I will help you, help coach you to success. So you want to do that. Your services, the programs you have, if you have different programs that you teach, speeches, if you're a keynote speaker, what speeches? Put like three or four speeches that are gonna attract people. I have people that call me, I would like you to speak about confidence. I want, I want you to give me the speech on confidence. I want, to give you the, I want you to come over and talk to us about your improv. Because I put that in there that that's what I talk about. That's my speech. So it's like they, oh, I have three choices or four choices. I have to pick one of these. And then they'll call me, and then I'll see what they want. So it's a hook. It's a hook to get them in. The other thing that, by doing, by filling this LinkedIn profile, how many people have a LinkedIn profile? OK. And is it pretty developed? Yes. OK, good. You're working on it. <laughs> people will be searching for you by your skills, by your title, all of these different parameters. So that's why it's important to put that in there. Uh, your experience, your current experience, and your past experience. And it'll ask you for the dates. Some things you do, you still are doing that you did you know, 10 years ago, and you're still doing it. But you're adding other experiences. You're adding other projects. Or you might be working for two or three different people. As a consultant, you might have two or three different businesses. So you want to have all of that in there. And then, again, you have a way to put in your a brief description about it. What results do you get? Don't make it like a resume. What results will have you accomplished through that, through that uh, business, through that experience? And the next one is the skills. There's a section there that you can add, I think, 50 skills. Speaker, keynote speaker, coach, whatever you, whatever your business is. Uh, improv, I have improv, I have uh, Toastmasters. Um, what are some of the other ones? So I have um, negotiating, storytelling. storytelling. So I have a lot of different skills. And what happens is when people see your site, because when you go on LinkedIn, your site comes up. If you're, if you're looking for a, a certain skill, your site will come up in front of people's, and it'll say, do you want to endorse them for this skill? And it'll have four different people up there. And you click it, and you want to endorse it, and then it'll pop up with them again for a different skill. You might click it again, and then it'll pop up again with a different skill. So sometimes it'll pop up with the same person two or three times. So you want to have it on there. Uh, the, the max that you can have that'll show is 99 endorsements for each skill. So obviously you want more endorsements 
for this for the, the skills that you really want to promote. Again, it shows credibility. Um, and then, so, so you're looking at that. If people are looking to bring you in as a speaker or consultant, they'll look at those skills. And if you don't have anything on there, then they don't know what you do, except what you have in your summary, if you filled it in your summary. But with the skills, now they can say, oh, you know, they're really an expert at that. Somebody called me and wanted me to speak on negotiating because I had that on there. Um, and then the next one is education. Do you have a degree? Any certifications? You can put logos on there. So I'm, I'm uh, certified in NLP and in my speak, speak, speaking coach. So I have those logos on there for each of the areas of experience of education. And then the connections. Connections are people, titles, and skills. So if you want to search, start searching for people. You can search if you know their name. You can put in skills. You want to talk to attorneys. You will type in attorneys, and it'll bring up bring up all these people that have attorney titles, or that say that their skills are attorney. It'll come up. Now you can go down the line and connect with who you want to connect. You can connect with everyone um, except the third level. The third level you have to be introduced to. But you can connect to anyone in the first level, second level. So when you're connecting to someone, you become a first level connection. If you haven't connected with them yet, it's a second level or a third level. Uh, titles, if you wanted to search by titles, speakers, it'll come up. All the speakers, everyone has those speakers on there. If you're looking for someone that does improv, it comes up with everyone that teaches improv or that has improv on their, on their resume. The next one is connections and follow. Again, you've got the people, the titles, and the skills. Then you have the groups, companies, and associations. This is great when you're going to market to businesses or associations because now you know who these people work for. If you wanted to look at the HR people in the company, pull up all the HR people, see what company they work for, or if you know what company you want to go in and, and speak at, put that company in. You can follow companies. You're not connected to them, but you're following them. So anytime they post any articles or posts, you will be notified of that. So you can keep up to date on it. It's also good if you're looking for a job. LinkedIn is one of the top ones for jobs. Right now, they're also let posting jobs on there that just came out recently where they're going to post a job. And uh, you get notified about that. Uh, the next one is accomplishments. Projects, if you're working on a project, uh, if you're uh, write, writing a book, if you're in articles, in magazines, if you're in a Toastmaster magazine, this is where you post that. So now they could see that you have more credibility. And then if you volunteer. Uh, the next one is recommendations. Testimonials. It's testimonials. So when you work for someone, when you do a program, when you work at a, for a company, have someone recommend you, then that will show up on there also. So they can see the company that is recommending you because it shows their name, their title, the company. So again, more credibility. Um, and if you want even more testimonials, then you reach out to people. So you might have a class and ask those people to recommend you, but then you also will at, reach out and say, you know, oh yeah, I know you and I, um, I was at your, your company and I did this presentation, so that they will recommend you. The next one is articles, posts, and slides. They have a slideshow. And so all of that you can post right there on your LinkedIn profile. It'll, again, any articles, I post my training there, and I get comments for it, and I get clients from it. Um, and then the next one is statistics. It'll show you how many people you're connected to, and 
how many people have viewed you but didn't ask to be connected to you. Why would they do that? Well, they're interested, they're reading your profile, but for some reason they didn't connect. But it shows you who they are. So you can then reach out to them. I saw you were, you know, you were viewing my site. I'd like to, and I'm, and I'm looking at your site and I, you know, your, your information, and I see that we have a connection. We have the same skills, or we might have similar interests. I'd like to connect with you. So that's a way to, again, connect with people that have already looked at your site. The, these are some sites that you can actually go on and click and look at their LinkedIn profiles to give you an idea of how they're filling it out. These are very successful people. Um, Lowe's House has the, the greatness, uh, greatness training, I think it's greatness training, but he started out teaching LinkedIn. He's actually a football player and hurt himself. Does anyone know him? So he had a, he was on a football, who was he? He was a pro football player who had a career ending injury yeah. that caused him to completely reconsider his place in life. Yeah. So he and said he was laying on his sister's couch, no money and nothing to do and injured. And so he, he started hmm, some of the bears. I'm not sure who he was with. So, um, so then he started teaching LinkedIn. He started looking into that to get jobs and then learned it and started teaching it. And he's making a lot of money. Uh, and now he's switching to other areas of training. So now he's in uh, personal development. Uh, Gary Vanerchuk, he started out as a wine he had a wine business. His father had a wine business. And he started doing these little podcasts where he would bring somebody on, they would drink some wine, and they would talk about it, and they got really famous. Uh, so now he actually teaches social media <coughs> to big corporations. And then Lois uh, Kramer, she teaches speakers and coaches how to write a book. So the uh, so I want to go to Lois House. So this is just, uh, you know, his title, uh, a header, you can actually put your own, it'll come up just blank with some screen that's kind of shiny, but you could put your own picture on there to be more interesting, and if you can scroll down, I have uh, 286 connections, similar connections with him, and he also belongs to Toastmasters, he's got his articles on here, his activity, and, uh, and his experience. So these are all really critical for you to start filling in if you haven't done that already. So go back through your profile and see what you what is missing so far, so that you can start building your business. Um, do you have any questions? Yes. Okay, I don't have a business, but I volunteer for a couple of organizations that I have over 500 videos on YouTube that are just long speeches. I haven't really worked much at the social media aspect, but I'm finding it's still growing without even me working at mm -hmm. it. What would you suggest I do to get started in helping to get this social media stuff working for me? And perhaps maybe what I can do to perhaps in the future monetize it a little bit. So you were, you're, what are you doing as volunteering? Well, like with the, with the or? Toastmasters contests, okay. the weekly College of Complexes speeches I put up, what do you want to do with it? I'm not exactly sure. I just want people to watch it and to know what's out there, to be honest with you. Okay. You know, because it's a good resource that District 30 has. It's underutilized quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So getting your name out there, your visibility, I would say suggest that you do your YouTube with your branding with your YouTube. Branded as, as Tim. That's another thing is that a lot of people were branding their business with their business name. But people know you. And they aren't always going to remember your business name. And what I've seen is a lot of people are re relaunching by using their name now instead of their business name and their, uh, like Lois Kramer, and then the title of her business. Lois Howes and the title of his business. 
so that they're both connected. But now you're branding your face because that's what people are going to remember, your face and your name. Um, I would say just sit down and, and think about how you want to, what you want to do with this. Do you want to become a videographer? Do you want to work for other companies? It's, it's something to start to think about. You know, or do you just want to have it as a, a community thing? Still branded. You got a question? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, roughly how long should the summary be without boring people? There is a limit on there, so it's not going to let you bore anybody. Okay. And I don't remember how many characters, but there is a, a limit. So you want to have about a paragraph about your story, and then a paragraph or two about who you serve, what results you get, and then uh, a call to action, and then list some of the services that you have on there. So, and that's not going to be like it's not going to be like a paragraph. It'll be a list, so that people can just eyeball all of the services that you have, or eyeball the keynote speeches. So then you would say, services, blah blah blah, keynote speeches, and then list them. So it's not going to be really long that people are going to be bored. You're just going to have maybe three or four paragraphs and then a list of the rest of it. Yes? Facebook really targets what they want you to see. So as a business person, how do you make sure that your, what you're posting shows up in somebody's feed? Kim has that, and what she keeps posting and getting people by make, by the comments you're making on there, you're encouraging other people to make comments back, and that raises your visibility, and they like that, and so then they start letting more people know about you. <laughs> and then the more shares you get, the more times people share it, the more uh, your reach increases. Quite so ask bit. people to share it. We've had reaches over over fifty thousand. Yeah, and on the business page, there's also statistics there where you could see your reach. Because I know that I've subscribed to a lot of different businesses, and I they never show up on my feeds. Yeah, it's it's because I, you might not be connecting with them. Because I need to connect with you them. You need to connect to with get them. With, mm -hmm. okay. Otherwise, they think you're not inter interested. Uh, so you need to engage. Also, you can't just subscribe to everything and then sit back. You need to engage. So if you're engaged and it says, oh, she likes us, we'll show her more. Mm -hmm. So if you watch a video of someone saying it and you watch the video, then you're going to get more from them. If you, if you just let it go by or post it, you don't get like or a comment or something, you're, you're going to see less of it. Right? But Facebook does play games with all of No, it does. It's, out of our control. it's about the engagement. But I hope that you got some information today that you can start working on. Start small, start in list, uh, in getting engaged with, connecting with people. Pick one or two sites if you haven't started already. Build your profile. Build your LinkedIn profile. And each of the other ones has a small profile. But really uh, be, it, be targeted so that the people you want to reach are going to be able to reach out to you. Mr. Jessica. Speaking of connections, if you want to connect up and learn more, talk to Kim and also connect up with Val. I'm sure both of them will be more than happy to help you and you can have a conversation offline with them and learn more about how to utilize both on the club side of it and of course, you know, Val in a span of 40 minutes covered a lot of information with us and it's sort of almost overwhelming because you think of all this but as Val just said, Start small, start building it one step at a time. Uh, Martin Luther King I love because I think it fits in this. He said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to see the first step. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So connect up with Val, connect up with Kim. And before we adjourn here, uh, any additional questions before I let Val and Kim, they're going to stay with us, of course, but any other questions you have for either one of them? Tim. What if you want to look at something but don't want to be looked at. Meaning you go to want to go to Pinterest, you got an obscure topic you want to look at, 
but you don't really want the other people knowing that you're there. Anonymous browsing. Do you have any capable uh, suggestions for that? The only that? one that knows that you're looking is LinkedIn. You have to do your settings. Uh, on your settings, there's usually the range of privacy settings. You, sometimes you have, especially Facebook, you have to hunt, dig around because they have right. some little tricks on there. That way, mm -hmm. if you get them all right, then when you browse, nobody will see. If you like something, no one's going to see it. So, <coughs> so you keep yourself anonymous. Because um, what I usually do is use something called the Tor browser at home that eliminates everything, but it's... Uh, what, you don't have one anymore wedding dress to come these kind of <laughs> that happened. That happened for two years. All right. I want to get. I want to get feedback from our guests this evening. Let us know what you thought about the workshop. Was it a real value to you? And if there's any suggestions or comments you have for us to improve future workshops, please let us know. So, Jacob, I'll start with you. Did you get value out of the workshop this evening? Uh, yeah, I did. I got a lot of value out of it. Actually, because I am one of the very select few dinosaurs that don't do social media, and I know I need to. But we want to hear Jacob's story because he's got a heck of a story to tell us. <laughs> Not tonight, but to come back. Yeah. yes, yeah, I'm giving back in the acting thing, and oh, yeah, I just got to say, again, yeah, blase, blase. Thanks, okay. uh -huh. Chris. Care. Yes, very good information. Uh, learned a lot, and uh, hopefully, I can use all the information to go forward from here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And um, yes, I found both presentations very worthwhile, and uh, just a lot to take home and try and figure out how to best use it. Thank you, Gary. Oh, thank you for both speakers. I really feel like a child need my hand held and uh, through this. Yeah. It's like I kind of go the wrong way, but uh, uh, I think I have someone I can ask now, so I appreciate it. I think we can all use a little hand holding on the yeah, social media so. side. No, no doubt about that. Well, um, what can I say? Um, a lot of information. It wasn't overwhelming for me because it was a lot of about social media, Facebook, that I, I didn't know it. Thank everyone for coming this evening and being part of the workshop tonight. I have one announcement that I'm going to call our president back up here. Just a reminder, our very own Roger Matthews will be competing next week, Saturday, March 25th, right here at Harper College. The contest will start at 10 a.m. It's going to be in Building D. It will be in Room D, 195. It's a lecture hall, holds about 120 people. The Northwest Division, we're trying to break a record. It holds 120, we want to max it out and get 120 people at the contest. So Roger, along with five other folks, will be competing in international speech contest as well as the tabletop contest. So next week, Saturday, March 25th, the contest starts at 10 a.m. And so I hope to see you all there. Thank you again for coming tonight. And then our closing comments from our president, Virginia. All right, did you have fun? Joel does not want to carry all that water out into the parking lot. So take a bottle of water for your, on the way home. Because you have to wash down that cake that you had. And Val has beets for it. I thought we were going to wash it down with the, the shot of liquor. Oh, well, like, oh. you got the one with the shot. Oh, jeez. Okay. So for those of you who have never been to TAP before, I would ask you to come back to a regular meeting. And those of you who are Toastmasters, if you haven't visited in a while, if you're working on a speech and you want to get some coaching, we love to do that. Just go to our website, let us know that you want to come, that you want to speak. You know, Val's always here, Jerry's always here, I'm always here, the Bobs are here, Joel's here, <laughs> Steve's here, Roger's here, Tim will tape you. 
the best thing you want to do when you're practicing something is to have somebody tape you, right? And then what you want to do is you want to, you want to when you watch that, turn the sound off and just watch yourself. Because you know the words to your speech. Do the mu movements match the words? Do they help accentuate your point? Right? And then you want to do the opposite. You want to just turn the sound on and listen to it. You'll hear all the clutter. You'll hear the words that you could take out. Then watch it as a finished product. Because if you watch it all together first, you will miss all of those other things. And it's all of those little things that make a difference. Because some people are more visual, some people are more audio, and they will be picking up on those things that you're not even aware of because you're looking at the complete picture. <laughs> so try it, and you can always come and ask Tim to tape you, and he will send it to you. And that's a big help. Yeah. So please, we're always here on the first and third Wednesday from 7 to 9. You're always welcome to visit, but if you want to speak, let us know ahead of time so we can get you on our agenda. April 5th. April 5th. No April Fool's jokes. Have them all done before you get yeah. here. Okay? All right, everyone, have a good evening.